Well, I think if we look at the chapter on Trigg's pregnancy, I don't know, I'm sorry, on Sarah's pregnancy and if she really did give birth to Trigg, there's, there are passages in there which, well, let's back up. You say that, if I'm quoting you correctly, you didn't and don't believe that Sarah Palin faked her pregnancy. I'm a tree gnostic. I just don't know the truth about that question. And so I, I, I present in Chapter 19, I state that this is a legitimate question. Uh, Andrew Sullivan has been one of the very few people who's continued to even think of it as a legitimate question. Uh, mainstream media has refused to even even look into this. And uh, there are there are reasons why it's difficult to believe the story that Sarah told about the pregnancy and the flight back to Alaska and the birth of Trigg. I don't answer those questions. I present what Sarah said. I present what some skeptics have said. I talk about the questions that are still unanswered, and uh, I make no hypotheses. You say, it is perhaps the most blistering assessment of her character possible that many Wasillans who'd known Sarah from high school onward told me that even if she had not faked the entire story of her pregnancy and Trigg's birth, it was, some, it was something she was eminently capable of doing. I, I don't know if that is the definition of innuendo, but that, no, I don't think not, that's fair. It's not innuendo. It, Actually, it is fair, Mike, okay. because um, I expected when I began to ask people about, you know, there's these stories that she's not really Trigg's mother. I expected that the people who've known her best and longest would say, well, that's outrageous. That's ridiculous. That's preposterous. Over and over again, to my amazement, I heard people say, well, you know, that could be because, you know, uh, that's not beyond Sarah. That's, that's certainly, you know, Sarah could certainly have done something like that. That's, that was, to me, that was a shocking revelation that the people who've known her longest felt that she was capable of something so outrageous as faking a pregnancy. Was this the people who knew her longest or the self-selecting group of people who knew her longest who spoke to you? Were there Sarah defenders in that group saying she could have done it? Sarah's people who, uh, Sarah told anybody who's on her side up there not to talk to me. It was very, it was hard to find people. I had, the, the other big surprise to me last summer was how unpopular Sarah was in Wasilla. She uh, she had lost so much of her support. She had alienated so many people. I went up there expecting to find, sure, some disgruntled critics and uh, a lot of people who still love Sarah. The people who still love Sarah are few and far between. Very, very few, Mike. My last question about the uh, agnosticism on the trig pregnancy question is if you had changed that sentence from the people who knew her best thought she was capable of faking the pregnancy, if you change that to the people that knew Barack Obama best thought he was capable of faking the, his, the nation of his birth, you could probably read that sentence in some magazine somewhere. It just struck me as... I don't, I don't, but you know what? I don't think the people who know Barack Obama best would say that he was capable. Okay, fair enough. I'm speaking with Joe McGinnis about his book, The Rogue, Searching for the Real Sarah Palin. It's published by Crown, and we'll be back with more after a break.